Meeting of the Park Committee for Wednesday, March 14th, 2018. Uh, present are Alderman John Vanderleest, Alderman uh, Andy Nicholson, uh, Alderman Chris Weary, and myself, Alderman Dave Menig. Uh, the first item on our agenda is approval of the minutes of the meeting of February 28th, 2018. So moved. Okay, second. we have a motion uh, by Alderman Nicholson, seconded by Alderman Vanderleest to approve the minutes. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Adoption of the agenda. Are there any additions or corrections? So moved. Okay, we have a motion by Alderman Nicholson, second, second by Alderman Vanderleest to adopt the agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, first item is report of the purchasing manager. It's a request for approval to purchase a stump cutter from Vermeer, Wisconsin for $53,553. Um, he's not here, but we have a report on it that. Uh, basically, the recommendation is to award it to the lowest uh, responsible uh, vendor of Vermeer, Wisconsin. Uh, do you have anything to add? No, that pretty much sums it up. Uh, this, just so you guys know, the stump cutter was approved in the 2018 park budget. Uh, so this unit will, will be replacing a 2001 stump cutter with uh, 2,364 hours logged on it. So, quite a bit of Quite a bit of hours logged in that stump grinder, and we had two companies uh, quote on this stump cutter. So yeah, staff is recommending approval of the, the low bid. From motion the to approve. Second. Okay, motion by Alderman Nicholson, second by Alderman Weary to approve. Is there any discussion? Okay, if not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, Next item is uh, uh, consideration with possible action on the proposed downtown pocket park playground. Uh, we had this on the agenda of our last meeting and we were rushed that night because we had a public hearing uh, of the Improvement and Services Committee scheduled so there, there was not a lot of discussion on it but uh, we put that on the agenda so that our staff can give us a full presentation and uh, explain uh, what is proposed here and uh, and how it would be funded. So, uh, James? Yes, thanks. As you stated, uh, Chairman, we had the uh, last part committee, we had an honor bonding request, and you guys want us to come back and do a little more of a presentation, um, and so we're doing that today. Um, the last part committee, we requested um, $60,000 we put in our bond uh, request from the our capital improvement plan, and we kind of with the public hearing, uh, the discussion was kind of cut short and we needed some more time to really um, go through this. So what we're looking at doing, and I will hand out, here's the location that we're looking. One is kind of a zoomed in, and the next page is, just to give you a, be familiar. Um, so right where the, uh, kind of across from the Hotel Northland, um, on Adams Street and kind of where Pine Street intersect, you're looking at a corner of the city that just kind of right now is, uh, doesn't have really have an identity. It's, it's got some dumpsters and it's just, it, it, it kind of needs a little bit of a beautification uh, in this corner. And so we're looking at this park as a, uh, it's a pocket park. Um, so if it's not a traditional playground uh, amenity. It's, it's got an art sculpture uh, type feel, but it's also playable. Um, so something that you would um, maybe at first look at it and say, oh, that's kind of a cool piece of sculpture. And as you get closer, all of a sudden you realize that there's some, some families there and some kids playing on it. And um, it's just kind of a cool piece that's both art and playability. With this, it's kind of three different levels to this concept. We have a rubberized surface um, with this concept, <coughs> especially around the play <coughs> feature, all ADA compliant. And then we also have seating areas uh, maybe some landscaping with uh, possibly depending on the budget and how much we can uh, do. Maybe some lighting, uh, some neat lighting with that. And then also the centerpiece is, is this sculptural play feature. So something you see maybe uh, it's taking a uh, very, as you can see, 35 feet by 66 foot space that right now is really not used for anything. Um, and you're making an identity or kind of creating a signature pocket park um, like you see in some other downtowns, um, it's, uh, what you're going to have is um, a park that uh, really maximizes that space. Uh, we'll fit a sculpture in that space within budget. Uh, we're looking at um, getting creative with this and putting in 
uh, sixty thousand uh, dollars, possibly from city funding, and then uh, forty thousand dollars in private funding. So a hundred thousand dollars is our budget for this pocket park, and uh, we're hoping that this will be something that when uh, throughout the summer we can work on, and this piece will be, um, you know, we will own all the improvements. And, uh, and amenities at this at this park, and it's something that we can open up by hopefully Labor Day um, next year. So this is also a handout that will give you kind of an example of the three different um, things we're thinking. So yes, hand these out. You can see. So there's a there's a lot of different throughout the country and. Europe and other areas, you, you can see a lot of examples um, for sculptural downtown playgrounds. Um, it kind of becomes something of uh, almost a destination. Of, hey, we want to go down there and take Facebook pictures with our family, a place where I can go and uh, coming out of the Hotel Northland or out of a restaurant or walkability um, throughout downtown, um, you can go and relax for you know 20, 30 minutes and it's just another nice amenity. Um, just so you know the closest uh, you know, playground uh, is Whitney Park. It's almost a half mile away. So there's not, with the, with the residents downtown, with the increase in businesses downtown, um, which is that walkability, playability factor, uh, quality of life. It's something that we think is a, a great amenity to add to our, our parks. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, at this point, it, it, it's uh, the request is to uh, include some funding in the bond issue, and you would continue to work on the design of it, and it's not finalized. The, the design is not finalized. Uh, what we'll do if we're approved, uh, what we look to do is actually, um, we look at taking, uh, the motion, I guess, would be to take $60,000 in tax increment financing. Um, for the, the proposed downtown pocket park and then forward the request to finance the committee for consideration. Uh, the total price of this park will be 100000 like I said, uh, so that'd be 60000 of our uh, city funding and then uh, $40,000 in private funding. Okay. okay. And then we would take, what we would do to answer your question is we would take a look at this space and within kind of the, this type of concept of a pocket park, we would put together a more formalized plan within budget and uh, apparently, the property was acquired through a land swap or something. Is that? Am I, am I right on that? Uh, well, no. Matt, Matt, do you have something you'd like to share with us? On? Um, that property is owned by the Bailey Condo Association. Um, that property at that particular location, the corner is actually right away, believe it or not. Um, so we don't have all that quite finished, finalized. Um, the parks department would own, maintain um, all the improvements for this project. Okay. Okay, questions. So I'll sure. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did I hear that it was a shift from bonding to TIF, or was that a... Uh, at the last park committee, I remember we initially put it in yeah. bonding, and it was brought up that we should look into, is this a TIF district, and could TIF funding be a part of that $60,000 mm -hmm. instead of putting on our bonding? So that was something that kind of direct us to look into. We could go either way. It could be TIF funding, it could be bonding. It's kind of up to you to you know, what you want to do with that. Would we bond and then use the TIF to pay off the bonds, or would we, is there a TIF, that, that's what we would do? Yes. Okay, other discussion? Just a question, why, why can't we just TIF? Use the TIF and send bonding and pay off the bond. Why don't we just use the TIF? I don't think Diana's in the room, but I, I don't know if we have enough. Um, okay, the, I, can, can I answer that? I just yeah, I, sure. Sure. Um, Hotel Northland's coming online, which will be significant in terms of, of an increment. Um, there's also a couple other restaurants that are, or a couple other buildings that are being reassessed. So, you know, we will have the money to pay the bond. We don't have the money right now to do a cash okay. sixty thousand right. outlay. Okay, tip. thank but you. But the tip, yeah. there will be enough in the tip to retire a bond. But if the tip comes in like we think it's going to, it'll be a very short bond payment. Okay, so thank you. Okay, other questions? How about the uh, the private sector 
who's involved with the private sector. They're here. So. Yeah, they're here. Um, if you motion open the floor. Yeah. Motion open the floor for interested parties. Okay. We have a motion uh, by Alderman Nicholson, second by Alderman Weary to open the floor to hear from interested parties. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Well, the floor is open. If anyone would like to speak to the committee, uh, come on forward. Sure. Uh, I'm Pastor Bill, and I'm the campus pastor at the new church that opened that's like connected right to wh what you're talking about. Yeah. And uh, I've heard about the park. Uh, we would love to have something like that. It would really serve our families. We have about um, like around 300 to 350 people attending every week downtown uh, on a Sunday, and then activities throughout the whole week. So it would serve us really well. Um, and we're and we've even offered to find ways to help fundraise for it or to even help maintain the park or whatever we could do We would love to help the city and partner with the city that way. So Okay, any questions? Okay, anyone else? Who should not Jeff? Jeff Marcus with Downtown Green Bank Corporate 130 East Walnut Street. Um, our organization would also like to be on record that we are in full support of this initiative. We think it's a very good utilization of an underutilized space. Uh, if you drive past that property, there's a lot of concrete on that east side of the building. And even if you take into perspective uh, a guest at the Hotel Northland to look at a green space and a playground, it's very inviting. Uh, I also think that there's um, business development initiatives as well. There are properties nearby that will be probably in more uh, demand with activation. Um, people draw people. So we just want to be on record that we think the Parks Department is is suggesting an initiative that really is appropriate and we ask that you to support it in, in any way possible. Thank you. Anyone else? Motion to close the floor. Motion by Alderman Nichols. Secretary of the Board to close the floor. All in favor, Secretary, by saying aye. aye. Opposed. Um, you know, I, I don't know that uh, we've ever really talked about the concept of pocket parks uh, at this committee before, but pocket parks are, are a very common thing around the country and, and also in, in Europe. Uh, I, I've seen them in a lot of cities, and the concept is that you take a a vacant lot or you take a remnant property, you know, this is an odd shaped property where you're not likely to get any other development and you make it into an inviting public place. And, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I do think that, uh, that being in this location where there are a lot of people who work downtown, who live downtown, there will be a lot of visitors downtown, uh, this is probably going to be seen and visited more than most of our other parks out in the neighborhoods. You know, it, it's, uh, uh, it's a very prominent uh, uh, site there, and I, I do think people are, are going to use it. So, um, you know, I know it, uh, it's something that uh, our staff had been working on for a while. Uh, uh, we as a park committee uh, you know, didn't know, didn't, hadn't heard anything about it until we saw it on the bonding. But I, I think it does does have some merit. I think there's a lot of thought been put into this, and if uh, the bonds can be paid with TIF, uh, so much the better. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion by Alderman Nicholson. Second. Second by Alderman Murray to approve. Any discussion? Alderman sure. Murray. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, these are common in many cities. You know, breaks up the asphalt jungle kind of feeling, and I think the greener you can make it, and the more appealing, the better. So, uh, I, I wouldn't mind bonding for this and paying back the TIF. Full steam ahead. Okay, any other discussion? Okay. So the motion would be to... Uh, James, what uh, motion are you suggesting? Um, well, I would say the motion would be to bond $60,000 to the Parks, Recreation, Forestry 2018 Capital Improvement Plan um, with... How do we... Uh, the understanding... With the understanding that it will be paid through, uh, through future TIF, uh, TIF 5, I think it is, district uh, funding. Uh, in this location, um, and then that will forward the request to the Finance Committee for consideration. Okay. So is that acceptable? So moved. Okay, that's the motion. Uh, I don't mind if oh. I yes. to private dollars, uh, 40%. Oh, that'd be good. I, I think that's a good challenge for us because we're going to yeah. go out and start raising money um, that this 
project. Uh, yeah. I understand the city's mm -hmm. commitment of sixty thousand, but that's contingent upon forty thousand dollars or more of private funding. And we're not going to do naming rights because this park probably won't stand the test of time. If you look at eventually long term, what we're going to do in the downtown, you just make them down in ten years, and I don't want to take someone's money and knowing full well that we want to put that street through someday. And go there goes Nicholson plan. Park. Huh? There goes Nicholson Park. Hey. <laughs> Unless you're okay for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we can make that part of the motion that's contingent yeah. upon uh, the fundraising that's, uh, that's so suggested. So $40,000 $40, or more of private fundraising. Sure. sure. Yes. Is that okay? That's yeah. Fine. So okay. moved. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for being here, everyone. Uh, the next item, number three, is consideration with possible action on the East River Optimus Park proposed park modifications. Uh, last year, I think it was in October, uh, we had a uh, uh, discussion at this committee about uh, the East River Optimus Park and there was uh, uh, a, uh, a donation by the Optimus and the Green Bay, uh, is it East Side Baseball League? Yes. Yeah, that right? Uh, to uh, to make some improvements to the park, uh, a lot of things to improve the field. Um, I think there were batting cages, uh, dugouts, um, a canopy over the ble a bleacher area, things like that. So this is looking at that and what more you know can be done to improve the park, right? Yes, I mean um, we've been working with uh, Eastside Little League and the Optimist Group for. Uh, well, I should say some people here have been working for uh, three decades at least with uh, this group really trying to uh, keep um, you know, baseball, inner city baseball, also this park as a gem for Green Bay. And they've been putting a lot of time, effort, and uh, uh, energy into this park over the years and we're kind of ready to almost take that next step into what will this park look like for the next um, you know, 30 years uh, going down the road. So we had some some challenges, um, and if you remember uh, back in uh, actually March 27th of 2013, uh, that's when the park committee actually approved a donation from the Optimist Club of Green Bay for the construction of the concession stand with restrooms at East River Optimist Park. The concession stand project was uh, kind of temporal and on hold, um, but construction will likely begin this year um, if we approve all these uh, concepts that we're doing tonight and also you know continue to add this we have this on our bond request currently. Um, so the, this construction of the shelter um, will create a need to relocate the Law Street cul-de-sac and parking lot. So I will uh, see, we've got some concepts here. This is the first page is what it the existing conditions. It's more of an overview of you can see kind of where the parking lot and the cul-de-sac is outlined. And then on the next page you'll can see the proposed configuration of how the new parking lot paving, uh, where the concession stand will go, and then future amenities also. Um, so on, on December 11th, 2013, uh, the Park Committee approved the purchase of the adjacent property, which was 1418 Law Street, for the expansion of this park. This property was needed because there was not enough room to construct these amenities adequately within the existing parkland boundaries. So this property was purchased and the house was actually removed. Um, there's still a four-stall garage on this property, and that will actually be re relocated as part of this project to the park shop. So we actually utilize that four-stall uh, garage at our park shop. At the last park committee, um, staff was requ you know, requested $400,000 in the 2018 capital improvements plan bond request to fund the modifications you see on the second page. So due to a shortage of time at that meeting, we wanted to present more of this, but um, once again, we're... Uh, you know, that's why we're going over this concept now. So this concept plan was developed for the, for the process. Um, the first step in this master plan was to find a location for the proposed concession stand. Now this was kind of a, a little bit of a challenge. Um, we of course, with the two fields and how they're located, we would, love, we would love to put this right in the middle of these two fields. That's the best, you know, most conducive for people going to the concessions and the restrooms. But um, there's only really one spot, as you see on this, uh, site map that this could go and that's because um, DPW uh, will not allow the building to be placed on the last street right away um, we actually have 
uh, a major underground utilities buried within that right of way um, that also goes uh, across the East River. So in addition, that would be very cost prohibitive to relocate any of the major utilities in, the, in this park. Um, I believe uh, when Dan and I were talking about this, uh, we were talking ninety to one hundred thousand dollars just to relocate the util utilities. Um, the building also needs to be raised three feet from the existing grade to meet the flood rate requirements in this area. So this creates challenges uh, to make this building ADA accessible, also with you know ramps and stuff like that. So the existing parking lot is currently undersized. Uh, for years, actually, we've had. Uh, cars parking on the grass within the park and the parking lot is usually when the parking lot's full and of course uh, that's against city ordinance. Um, the existing parking lot is 29 stalls um, and the proposed parking lot will expand it to 46 stalls. Um, the current parking lot is located between the proposed concession stand and the south ball field. Um, that's the current parking lot. Now the proposed one um, is better because it's not so problematic with people having to cross the parking lot in order to go to the concessions and restrooms. And as anybody that has kids or you know, youth knows that you don't want that, to, uh, it's a safety hazard, of course. So the concept, this concept moves the parking lot west of the proposed concession stand to avoid all pedestrian uh, and vehicle conflicts. So due to the parking lot and building construction, uh, we are actually required by federal law, of course, to make this site ADA compliant. So we will be connecting the two ball fields to the concession stand and the parking lot with AD accessible paved walk. Um, the conceptual design also incorporates a future playground with an open shelter. Uh, the future playground and open shelter is not part of that $400,000 that we're proposing. If there's existing funds remaining, then we can also we could possibly add them as alternates. Um, you know, the open shelter, for instance, being an alternate that we could add on if we have existing funding. Um, so. There's not enough, um, it's doubtful though, that we'll have enough funding for the playground if, if we do have enough funding for the open shelter, but we can easily add that at a later date or bring that back for future consideration. So in 2013-14, the park committee actually added, allocated 125,000 in bond funding to install utilities to, to the proposed concession stand and to relocate the Law Street cul-de-sac. This work, work will be completed using this funding and will be incorporated into the construction of the rest of the project. So that's the presentation. Uh, any questions? And, and we also have some parties, of course, here that have been a part of this project and, the, and this yeah. initiative for a long time. So uh, you think it'll be possible to start on this uh, redesign this year, the construction this year, or would it be done when? Uh, well, the first thing I believe is we have to relocate that uh, cul-de-sac. Um, and then yes, I, I guess we would uh, probably uh, start if at the soonest in the fall. Um, I don't think with the the season coming up on, upon us pretty quickly, um, we'd have to maybe look at a maybe a fall start construction just so we can still get those uh, the little league games in this summer. But yeah. motion to approve. Okay. Got a question first. I was going to ask you how big is the uh, concession stand in the men's room? In the, is it going to be one continuous building? Then how big is that going to be? Um, the exact dimension on that, I don't know. I know we have a budget for that. Um, I don't know if you have any other info on that right now, but um, it would be adequate for the needs of this park. Um, it would be a, um, it would just be an upgraded facility with concessions and restrooms. I, I see it. I don't know if you have any other. Could we suspend the rules? To open the floor for interested parties. Okay, we have a motion and a second to open the floor to hear from interested parties. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? Come on forward, Dan, and... Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Dan Madigan, 821 South Quincy. I know that the, uh, the bathrooms are going to be designed so that they be accessible to the city uh, at all times under there. So I, mm -hmm. I believe it's, there's two stalls and two urinals in the men's and three stalls in the women's. It's, it's certainly going to be adequate for everybody. If I, if I can speak on the whole project, Certainly. the Optimus have been there since 1953, more than 30 years. Oh, yeah. and, when, and when it started, all we were was a fence there. And almost every backstop, we're, we're pouring concrete for dugouts tomorrow, by next, next week. Uh, next week. Yep. And so we continue as a group to just invest our time in trying to, to make this the best spot for youth in this neighborhood, in this city, to come to play baseball. I really don't want a, a place where all of our kids are going to the exterior of suburbs of the town to play their sports. It's all, to me personally, it's about, in my Optimist Club, which I'm here speaking for, 
Uh, it's about trying to provide an opportunity for everybody to use these facilities. So um, we, not only that, but we have went from playing just summer baseball to playing fall ball. Seven months of the year we're there heavily using this diamond. So it really would be something if we could have the support of the city, it would be uh, just phenomenal of the kids and the optimists are willing to help contribute on the on the building whether we part participate and build the building or whether we provide some funds to the city and they go out as part of the whole bid I'm open to either one of those venues so our optimist club is too so if you have any questions for me I'd answer them. Anyone have questions? I don't. Okay let's close the floor then. We should uh, close the floor. Thank you Pam. Uh, we have motion for Alvin Nicholson, second of development analyst, to close the floor. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, we motion to approve. Uh, okay, we have motion for Alvin Nicholson to, I think the motion is to. Uh, uh, so the motion would be to request to fund the East River Optimus Park proposed park modification as presented in the Park Rec Enforcement Department 2018 Capital Improvement Plan and forward to the Finance Committee for consideration. Okay. That's to that motion. effect, right Alvin here. Nicholson, second to Alvin Weary. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. This will go to the Finance Committee uh, March 29th, I believe. 27th. The 27th. Yeah. And uh, will be considered along with other bonding for other departments. So uh, uh, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to be there if you, if you want or if you're available and want to advocate for it. But uh, this is a recommendation from our committee and we're four members of the council. Do you want numbers? We can get you numbers there. Yeah. So, but thank you much. Thank okay, you. Thank, thank you for being here. Okay, uh, we have the uh, next item is the director's report. Motion to uh, receive a place on file. We got a copy of it in writing. Any to add? Um, you saw most of it. Um, you know, I think uh, one, one thing to mention is, you know, as we're presenting these concepts, um, we would like to come back probably in April and, and present the 4K uh, edition of the Wildlife Sanctuary. Um, something okay. that is coming up uh, within the next year too, and I think that'd be something to share with you guys maybe in April, uh, in the next month or so. So something to look forward to. I, I think spring is right around the corner, I believe. So we'll be um, kicking off. I mean, technically high school sports and youth sports would be starting already if our fields were as the snow was melted. So we can look forward to that. And then I do one. Quick thing, uh, we actually have a department intern uh, that started in January and she's going to be an uh, intern with us through April and she's here today. I just wanted to, uh, it's Liz Hiska. Um, so she uh, actually. Welcome aboard. Good choice. <laughs> yeah. Quality yeah. choice. We'll train you well. Thank you. <laughs> yes. She's actually seeking her master's in uh, recreation management for, oh. at UW Lacrosse. Crosse. director at Tom Road. <laughs> you never know. Um, but she also, eight, eight summers she spent as a playground leader, uh, adult softball, youth softball, Colburn. basketball, yeah, all them Colburn things. Warriors. So, Colburn. Okay. <laughs> yep. So that's why she's so good. That's a good, that's, that's <laughs> a good <laughs> background. Uh, the only question I had in reading the report was what is the first annual Crazy Mud Mayhem? Oh, yes. All right. Actually, uh, maybe Liz yeah. wants to tell you about it because uh, it's her project. This that is year, my internship so. project for the semester. We have to do a semester project. So it's going to be a family-friendly event held over at Triangle Sports Area, and it will be June 23rd, so kind of to kick off Kids Day weekend, or Kids Day. Um, it's going to be probably like 12 to 14 obstacles within like a two-mile-ish course, and families of all ages, kids of all ages can participate, and we're in the planning stages of it right now. Good. Okay. You're well, here. That, that's my district, so I'm happy that you're, you're doing that. Absolutely. Right. Uh, okay. Anything else? Any other questions? We should receive a place on file. Okay. Sure. Motion by Alderman Nicholson, second by Alderman Weary to receive the director's report and place it on file. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion to adjourn. We have a motion by Alderman second. Nicholson, second by Alderman Weary to adjourn. Roll Roll All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. <laughs> All right. Are we ready? Regina. Nice meeting you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.